This problem of getting laid off inside of a uh, reduction in workforce, the narcissist boss who is taking credit for all your ideas and, and you're left kind of standing there. These are things that feel out of your control and are circumstances that you're experiencing. But what I want to tell you is there's absolutely a way to wrap your arms around it and feel more in control and actually create a career path for yourself that is easy, effortless, and in kind of free flowing. Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Love Your Work Life, episode 157. I'm especially excited about this week's episode because it was inspired by a conversation I had with a client. And this was someone who I had worked with a couple years ago, actually, and I saw that they had an open to work on their LinkedIn profile again. And so I just reached out and said, hey, let's do a virtual coffee. Just want to check in, see what's happening. And what was fascinating is that this person wasn't laid off. This person made an intentional decision to leave a job and start pursuing other opportunities. And what I really loved about this whole exchange, this conversation was the situation that they were found themselves in looking for a job this time compared to last time when we worked together was very, very different. It reminded me of an episode and you can go back and find it that I call, you know, what you're running towards. There's a difference when you're in job search mode from when you're running away from something and when you're running towards something. And I totally get it. There are times when, yes, we are 100% running away from a toxic work environment, from a boss or environment company that doesn't appreciate us. I get it. But the more we can focus on what we're running towards, the easier the job search is going to be, the easier reaching out for that promotion is going to be. The overall essence and energy is so much more empowering. And that's exactly the vibe I was getting from this client was they were empowered. They felt empowered because they were taking ownership of their career. And we had such a fun time talking about what that felt like and what that was going to look like going forward. And it got me thinking about, actually changed my whole plan for this week's podcast episode based on that conversation. Because my friends, there is a ton that feels like it's out of control in your career. That's the problem that we face, right? And and that's kind of the upheaval that's happening right now. People want more control. And on a surface level, what that looks like is, hey, I want to work remote. The company wants me back on site. What is that a battle of? That's a battle for control. Think about it. That's the root cause. Companies want control and employees want control. Here's what I want to tell you about today. This problem of getting laid off inside of a um, reduction in workforce, the narcissist boss who is taking credit for all your ideas and, and you're left kind of standing there. These are things that feel out of your control and are circumstances that you're experiencing. But what I want to tell you is there's absolutely a way to 
wrap your arms around it and feel more in control and actually create a career path for yourself um, that is easy, effortless, and in kind of free flowing. I'm going to give you three tips to help you get there. These are tips that I have used throughout my career to have that sense of control. And here's what it's all about. It's about always betting on yourself. Why is that important? Because you are the only thing you can control. Can't control what other people think about you. You can't control the economy, the market. Is it an employer job search market? Is it employee or candidate job search market? You don't have any control over that. But that doesn't mean that you don't have control over your career. Always bet on yourself. So here is how to do that. The first way to always bet on yourself and have more control of your career is plan ahead. Now, I know this sounds like maybe planning ahead for the job you have next feels a little bit like you're being disloyal to the job you have now. But my friends, that is not true. It's absolutely not true. Planning ahead means you're betting on yourself. It means you're taking control. It means that amidst uncertainty, you have a certain assuredness and certainty about yourself. Think about all of the different ways that we plan ahead. We plan vacations well in advance. We plan for retirement. You might be planning for your a children's college education. But somehow we just leave our careers on default, things kind of happening by accident, going with the flow of whatever anybody else is doing instead of taking charge and planning ahead. So how do you plan ahead? Well, first of all, I encourage you to always have your resume ready to go. Too many people come to me who are ready to leave, ready to elevate, and they haven't touched their resume in years. No problem. I've got them covered for sure. But if you always have your resume like ready to go, how cool is that? That means you can move on a dime. That means if something shows up that you want to go for, you're ready to go for it. And you don't have to think about how cumbersome it's going to be to, oh, great, I'm going to have to update my resume and da, 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 da. No, have it ready to go. This is about betting on you. And every time something significant happens in your career, capture it, get it on your resume. And this leads me to point two of planning ahead. And that is always, always, always tracking your accomplishments. When you have some stats, when you have some metrics, write those down, keep track of them. Maybe you even email yourself an email from work to your personal email with those report stats. Uh, I'm not suggesting, of course, that you, you know, break any confidentiality agreements or anything like that. But, you know, if you're a digital marketer, then those stats are public. How many followers did you grow the business? There are so many things that you must own when you're betting on yourself and those results, those accomplishments, that impact that you create day in, day out are your results. Please don't shy away from tracking them. Start a weekly journal, maybe at the end of your day, every day, or maybe once a week on Thursday nights. If Friday is Friday, you just want to break away from work at the end of the day, then maybe Thursdays is a great day to capture those accomplishments. But by having your resume always ready and capturing your accomplishments on a regular basis, you are planning ahead. This isn't about being paranoid or, you know, doomsday preparation. 
It's about betting on yourself. It's about owning what you can own and control in your career. All right, step two in betting on yourself is always be curious. Curiosity is such a key component. Curiosity isn't about um, moving too swiftly into something. It's kind of like just always having your eyes open. It's about paying attention to what interests you. I can tell you from personal experience that I've always paid attention to what's interesting to me on the job. The current things I'm doing and the things that are interesting that I might be able to leverage going forward or develop in myself or invest in myself so that I have additional skills that either benefit the company that I'm working for and the role I have or me in my future. I learned this through um, teachers and psychologists like Marcus Buckingham and Donald Clifton. I really, really recommend a couple of books to you. Um, I'll put them in the show notes. But what it's about is leveraging your strengths, paying attention to what interests you, and just realizing that because it interests you, you probably already have a strength associated with being successful in that area of interest, in that new job function, in that little pivot that you're thinking about. It's really, really fascinating. Once you start paying attention, then ideas, inspiration, motivation starts coming together and actually can loop back to part one because Now you're paying attention to your accomplishments as associated with those interests. And here's the other aspect of curiosity. Curiosity is also about connecting the dots from your natural behavioral strengths to those areas of interest, those things that kind of capture your attention or or spark a little something for you. In the personal dynamics report that I have all of my clients participate in, one of the little um, exercises that is available in that is just some questions, just some self-awareness things. And you can do this anytime, but it is what do I enjoy about the work I do and how do those things I enjoy connect to your natural behavioral strengths to my natural behavioral strengths. My friends, this kind of self-awareness will be so empowering. You combine that self-awareness with curiosity and I'm telling you, it is how I accomplished every single thing I set out to accomplish in my career. And that includes... The pivots I made when I got laid off. (laughs) Every time I got laid off, I decided to pivot. It's like, "Hmm, I think I'm not, I think I'm kind of done with this industry. What do I have? What value can I offer in my next role in this new industry? That's what curiosity does. That's what tracking your accomplishments does. That's what having that kind of self-awareness around your strengths and connecting the dots to your interests, to the occupations that um, are capturing your attention. I also had another client recently come to mind because they worked at a company that another client was interested in. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe an introduction would make sense just to, you know, kind of help my new client understand the company that my previous client was working in. And so I reached out, we had a little, we had a little DM conversation on LinkedIn and I loved it because this person said, you know what? I looked at my personal dynamics report again the other day and I fell in love with me again. That's what self-awareness does for you. That's what understanding your strengths does for you. And the personal dynamics report that I use with my clients, 
I started using that years ago when I was coaching on the side and before all of my major career pivots through layoffs and what have you. And every time I needed to shore myself up, I went back to that report and I just infused my brain once again with the things that make me uniquely me and the things that just empower me to bet on myself. You can do the same thing too. Now, the third thing about betting on yourself sounds absolutely counterintuitive, and that is always be selfish. It It's counterintuitive because we're taught different things, right? We're taught to give and give and give and contribute and contribute and contribute. And we can. And we must. That's the value exchange. What value we provide at work and what we get in return. But my friends, being selfish about yourself and about your career is one of the best things that you can do because your loyalty to yourself counts. First and foremost, as I mentioned earlier, loyalty to you is not mutually exclusive to loyalty and showing up as your best self at work. The two can coexist. They can both be a yes. And when you're loyal to yourself first, it actually helps you show up as your best self at work. It really does. It's about just connecting to who you are and the more connected you are to yourself through this selfish kind of loyalty, the more ease and certainty you have about yourself, which means you show up in confidence, you show up empowered, you show up assured, you show up as the highest energy in the room. And with everybody you interact with. And that's just not empowering for you. That's empowering for every single person that comes into your sphere of influence. Whether it's people you're interacting with as an individual contributor. Whether it's your team because you're a middle manager. You're influencing them. You're influencing the people above you. This kind of selfishness and loyalty to yourself can do nothing but help you thrive at work. And when you need to survive because something's going sideways at work, it's so much easier to make the leap and let go of those ties that kind of keep you stuck because you've got this misinterpretation of loyalty and contribution. So please, please, please always be selfish. The next thing about being selfish is that you're always looking for the signs. And sometimes, my friends, there were plenty of signs, I know for me, and maybe you too, going on at work about the state of the business, about um, new leadership bringing in toxic energy. And if you're like me, you ignored the signs. And you sacrificed yourself instead of being selfish and you stayed there too long. Part of it is looking for the signs of what you don't want. Because the signs of what you don't want are a clue to what you do want. But the next step is actually going for what you want instead of wallowing in um, powerlessness by staying in what you don't want. So what do you do when you're looking for the signs and reading between the lines? Yes, you might notice what you don't want, but when you start looking for the positive aspects, the positive aspects in the job, because you may have to stay there for a while while you look, but most importantly, look for the positive aspects in you. What do you bring to the table? What can you offer? I had a fascinating conversation with a client just this week. We were redoing the resume 
and going through all of the adjustments I had made and stories I helped tell. And something really fascinating came out of that conversation. And it was, you know, I've been thinking about this promotion for myself, but I don't know if I can get there, but I keep seeing these job descriptions that are calling to me. My friends, if that's you, then your selfishness and you looking for the positive aspects in yourself are going to help you make that leap. It's the best way to just start to open up the possibility and then go back through these three steps. These three steps of always planning ahead, of always being curious and always being selfish equal always betting on yourself and they work together and sometimes one comes first and then the other one but it's this constant wheel and cycle of regeneration selfish and curiosity and planning ahead and planning ahead and and curiosity and selfishness they work together they're interdependent and these three things coming together so that you have the ease, certainty, and confidence to always bet on yourself is exactly how you take control of your career. So that you're not afraid anymore. You don't have fear um, holding you back and keeping you stuck. You have everything you need because if you look for it, it's there. All right, my friends. Always bet on yourself. I'm excited for you. And if you need help, if you need someone who will 100% find all of the dots, all of the logic to where you are now and where you want to be and put those puzzle pieces together, I am the person that can help you. It's my love language to help people see their own possibilities, their own capacity, and get that vision and fire for what's next and to bet on yourself and go for it. All right, my friends, I will talk to you again soon. If you like listening to this podcast, I invite you to visit the Love Your Work Life website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. On the site, you're going to find free resources and information about all of my coaching programs, everything you need to land a great job, advance your career, and lead and build an awesome team. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn.